Welcome back, beautiful souls. I'm so happy to be here with you today. As you can see, I have my bird moss box, and I'm so happy that it's here. I, um, for whatever reason, did not realize it was coming today, so it was a wonderful surprise. One of my all-time favorite boxes. And real quick before we get to opening it, I wanted to share with you guys, do you guys remember my teeny tiny little cactus I got from them? It's still alive, three months, I think three months later, maybe two, but I think three months later. And it, but at least two months, it's still alive, which is longer than anything else in my, <laughs> has lasted with me. So I'm so grateful and I wanted to show it to you guys. So I had to replant them because he grew to the top of his little container. I'm trying to see, I don't know if you can see like right here, he suddenly gets skinnier, this part. This is how much he's grown since I've had him. Right here is where he used to be in this little taller, smaller part on top is how much he's grown since I've had him. So he's actually not just alive, but thriving. And here's my little tiny baby mushroom I got from Silver Soul Fox. It's in here. I just replanted him about a week ago and was very, very scared that when I replanted it, it would, you know, die or something. But so far, so good. And I, when I did, I put the little tiny mushroom I got from Silver Soul Fox. It's the perfect for this. And I would love a name for this little guy. Um, and I'm really bad at naming things. That's just not my forte. So please, everybody leave your suggestion for names down below so I can pick a name for this adorable little survivor still alive under Misty's care. <laughs> now let's go ahead and, oh, shoot. One second. I just set it down. I always have a hard time getting the incense into this incense holder. And so I just set it down and now I'm getting ashes everywhere. All right, here we go. I'm trying to remember the theme. Ooh, it was like um, the far shore, I think. It made me think of a beach far away or something like that, I believe. Here is the inside. Oh, it's wrapped up all nice and tight. <laughs> it's not usually like that. All right. Oh, I guess I could um, open our seal. The far shore, yes. All right. So here's our beautiful artwork. The far shore found objects that is one reason so some of our sisters recently went to the beach in california and i have to say i want to go so bad so i went once when i was nine um to the ocean in new jersey and i don't remember you know what town we were in but um I, I don't know, I just remember, I remember the Italian ices, I remember the sand, and I remember, so I was the only kid, and the only one there that was getting in the water with our group of people. There's other people on the beach, it wasn't empty or anything. But I was the only one going up to the water and getting in the water, and I remember that, you know, I was so excited, I wanted to go get in the water so bad, but once I got up there, just the, the, beautiful power of the ocean really enveloped me and I don't mean like I wasn't in the water yet but I just mean I felt that power and I suddenly became very frightened and <laughs> all I did was put my feet in the water um but I would love to go as an adult and also for many reasons one of those reasons is i would love to just like travel along the beach and find little amazing objects to pick up so yeah i love that the found objects it can take days for a boat to reach the far shore the vessels pace the shoreline nervously 
taking the long way around and always maintaining sight of the land. In contrast, the fisher crows swoop and race over the dark water, unafraid. The far shore's rack line is a glittering mosaic paved with flotsam. Water tumbled relics from distant places, softened and smoothed, collect in the shallow water. The octopi choose the best bits and pieces. With these found objects, they build graceful installations, pathways and gardens in the tidal pools. Colorful creatures move in. Viewed from above, their world is a bright, busy tapestry. That sounds amazing. I would love to see that. Little environments that the octopi have created for all these creatures to live in. That sounds really neat. Have you guys seen something like that in person? I'd love to know. If you have pictures, I definitely want to see pictures. All right, let's get our paperwork out. Okay. Do I start with the back or the front, you guys? Dreaming, you arrive on the far shore. You've never made it here before. Carried by tides. Octopus treasure. Sea bean, drift seed from a distant place. Dream bean, snuff box sea bean. I guess might be other names. Empowered dreaming and communing with spirits is what sea bean is good for. Sand coins, friable and easily snapped open. Priable maybe? F-R-I-A-B-L-E. That, that is like friable, like you can, you know, pan fry some food or something would be F-R-Y. So I'm actually not sure what this word is. That's a new word to me. I'm sorry for... <laughs> um, so sand coins are friable and easily snapped open. Five birds inside. They are good for prosperity and purpose. Cock pattern. Slice to see the winding chamber inside. The spiral, the golden ratio, appears again and again in bird moss lore. U, that equals U equals the golden ratio. Fragment of tile. This must be from the city of canals. Is it crumbling into the sea? Stray berry shell. Looks like a rosy berry. Offering of beauty and sweetness. The octopus tells you... I believe that your new power is waiting for you somewhere in the water, but attaining it will not be easy. Most boats will not cross the dark water. You must begin seeking it now because the journey may be a long one. Make ready now. Walking along the rack line, you examine the seaweed and flotsam, which has washed ashore. You find the scattered pages of a book. Reassemble it to learn more about the far shore. The water keeps no one's secrets. Eventually, it tosses them ashore. It's a mini journal kit. That's exciting. Let me see. Is that what this is? Hmm. Okay. Um, bear with me, guys. I'm just trying to make sure I have the right thing here. I think this is the mini journal kit. So it's like little pages. There's like the book cover so you could fold it. And we've got pages. Observe the nests of squirrels 
for signs of an uncertain winter. They say a ship can cross the dark waters if it is accompanied by a black cat. They can see spirits that we cannot. And then here's our next page. French objet trouvé, maybe? Objet trouvé? Must art be made or can it be chosen? The collector suggests that it is the placement of items that creates beauty, bringing them together, placing them in proximity to each other, sorting them. These are the ways that new meanings are created. A strawberry shell hints that land is near. Touching a drop is like touching the sea. Ooh, we have a map. The secrets of the crumbling city are beginning to surface. What floats is what remains. And we have a dragon and our octopi, octopus. There's only one. Drift seed. There is a type of tree or woody vine that is dispersed, not by bird or snail, but by the water's currents. Its seeds resemble large beans. Scientists used used to believe they were still they were the still hearts of tree or cliff spirits. We do not know where they originate. Perhaps they are from beyond the borders of bird moss. Oh, that's cute. I'll have fun putting that together and playing with that. The scribbled notes you find point you towards a spot between two craggy formations. You spot a gleaming shell half buried in the sand. When you brush away the sand, you see that it is actually two matching shell halves fashioned into a latching box. Let's see. Oh, that's so beautiful. For those of you that have been uh, so either subscribed to the Witch's Moon or um, have watched them for years, uh, from years past, we have a couple of seashell jewelry boxes. One is a larger and one is medium and they're a little different than this they are different than this but now this is kind of like a somewhat matching small one it's a different shell and it's made differently um the others are a shell top with a different bottom that has like the mother of pearl around it but this is unique i haven't seen one like this this isn't like one i have and i love though that it can go with my others so now i have a small a medium and a large and it's so pretty look at those colors oh that is so special i love it i love that it's got purple in it Ooh, we have a message inside our shell. Oh, dreamer, seek a pale coin. It will crack under your grip to release the five eyeless birds. They'll carry your message in all directions, even across the dark water the boats avoid. Ooh, exciting. I love this. Come up with some special little pieces to put in there. A remnant of a fishing net lies discarded on the beach. It has been fashioned into a bag that is compact but capacious. Spacious? Is capacious a word or should that have been spacious? I'm sorry, there's a lot of words I don't know today. <laughs> Use it to carry wet or sandy items or take it along for spontaneous market stops or orchard visits. You can also hang it in the kitchen to hold garden produce. 
Oh, that's cute. It's our little, it's our little fishing net farmer's market kind of a bag um, that you can take with you to the farmer's market. Like it's said to get produce or to the orchard. That's cute. I don't have one like that. I don't get to go to the farmer's market anymore because they're only there when I'm at work. <laughs> but if I ever do, now I have a cute little produce bag. Cute. In bird moss, driftwood is a reminder of the power of the elements. You find a wand-like piece which has been buffed to a misty patina. Use it for any practice which is enhanced by the spirit of water and wood. Use it to create a small besom, a display for a kitchen witch, or a garden steak. And here's our little kitchen slash art witch. She's from Bird Moss, and she's always here on my desk, giving me creative inspiration. Here is our water tumbled driftwood. I love it. I don't have any driftwood. I saw this piece of driftwood somebody had, and they had these, all these different unique kinds of air plants in it. It was really cool, all in the little spots. I really loved it. It does kind of look like a wand. That's awesome. I need to come up with something special to use that for. Gazing into a vibrant tidal pool, you spot an octopus making her rounds. She tamps down the bits of shell and stone she's arranged in the floor of the pool. As soon as she notices you, she hurries over. It's you, at last! The pool is home to creatures with no bones, uncanny shapes, and missing eyes. Oh, oh I dropped her. First of all, we got this teeny tiny little sachet. I love it. Ocean water blue. And it's got an adorable octopus inside, you guys. How precious is that? Oh my gosh, I love her. She is amazing. I love her so much. That is awesome. Can she fit in the shell? Can this be like her little home? Because have you guys seen that video where the octopus takes two halves of his shell and closes it over herself or himself and to hide? Oh my gosh, how perfect. I love it. That is the cutest stinking thing I've ever seen. I love it. Let's prop it up like that so you guys can see. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. The octopus shows you a shell which has been quickened with guilt. G-I-L-T. Use it in turn to quicken your net bag. Its mathematically perfect swirl helps to funnel the current through the bag's sieve-like structure, making it easier to discern the current's messages as they are swept through the air. So we have a little white sachet. And we have a bulb pin inside. Wow, look at that. So it is just like a slice of a shell. Like it said on the back here. Was it on the back? Conk pattern. Slice to see the winding chamber inside. And doesn't this remind, well, it reminds me, tell me if it reminds you also of 
the old Dr. Doolittle? Was it the old Dr. Doolittle where he went across the ocean in this giant snail's shell? And there were like rooms and like a spiral staircase in there. That's what this reminds me of. And then we have the gold gilding on the edges. Oh, I love it. And we have the bulb pin to attach it to our bag. Although I don't know if I'll keep it on there, to be honest, just because this is, I don't know when I'll get to use the bag, but this I want to display. This is so pretty. That's beautiful. And you can see this shell looks like green and brown modeled, but it seems like it has a lot of green on it, which I'm not sure that I've seen a shell with a lot of green before. That's really pretty. Let's see, it says, the stitch marker pin connects you to women doing wise work with tools like needle, thread, and yarn. She's talking about the bulb pin here. I guess it's also called a stitch marker pin if you're somebody who does those kind of crafts. Beautiful. Before you leave, the octopus selects a few special items for you. Display them with your oddities or include them on your altar. Even here, the animals seem to be preparing for something. An uncertain winter? Oh, so we have like this very similar to the netting mesh type of bag. Really neat looking. I love this material. What a cute bag. And that's perfect for this box. And I hear noise in here. What do we have? Ooh. Oh, wow. So we do have a jewelry case here that we can use as a display. And these are the octopus treasures that were on the back. Oh my gosh. Look at that. You guys, little tiny baby sand dollars. Oh wow, that is so beautiful. And a little piece of china. So here are our octopus treasures. Let's go back over the back and discover which, what each one is. So, sea bean. Drift seed from a distant place. That's this, I believe. That is so cool. That is so neat. It's also called a dream bean and a snuff box sea bean. And this is good for empowered dreaming and communing with spirits. And then here's our sand coins. These are easily snapped open. There's five birds inside and they're good for prosperity and purpose. Oh, I would hate to, I don't want to pop, snap them open though. And then here's our conch shell that's sliced, our conch shell slice. Look how beautiful that is. I love it. I love all of these things so much. And next is our fragment tile. Oh, our, oops. Our, this is, oh, it doesn't say what this is good for, okay. And then we have our fragment of tile. This must be from the city of canals. A little tile fragment so pretty 
And last is our strawberry show, which is an offering of beauty and sweetness. Look at that. It is so pretty. I love all of these things in this box. And talk about amazing timing because we also have our last uh, subscription box coming from June Mermaid this month, which is the Sea Witch. So I just am so excited to put those items together with these items. I think um, I've really never done elemental altars or anything. I usually tend to just have one altar from Sabbath to Sabbath. I decorate it for one Sabbath and I leave it up till I decorate for the next. But with this amazing box, I, I love all these treasures that we got. And I know I have a box full of um, more sea treasures on the way from June Mermaid. I think with the two boxes, I've just got to create a special place for all these amazing items. Tell me what you guys thought down below. I hope you loved this month's box as much as I did. I literally say this all the time, but every month, I say this box blew me out of the water. It's my favorite box ever from Bird Moss. And then every month tops the month prior. Like how amazing is that? I don't know how she does it, but Shannon, you are amazing. And I love everything so much. Thank you, Shannon, for another amazing box. Remember to use code MISTY for $10 off your first box. You don't wanna miss out on next month's treasures. And speaking of next month's treasures, Let's see where we're going. Are you ready? I am. We're meeting the squirrels. Oh, how cute. I love squirrels. I think they're adorable. And I have this cute, such a cute little squirrel stamp that I use a lot. So, oh, cannot wait to see how she tops this box because I have to say, this is an amazing one. Well, thanks for joining us today, and I hope you all have a magical night. Bye.